Welcome to Center of Online Education, Uttar Pradesh Student Open University. On the series of research methodology, we are going to explore another important topic today that is higher learning and research in India. As you all know from post independence to independence, higher education has transformed into various layers and present the present scenario, the present structure of higher education is far more better than what it is in, in the post independence era. Today we are going to explore that what is higher learning and what is the impact in the research. So post independence higher learning or higher education and research has evolved significantly. India has laid more stress on the access to the quality education by one and all. Several committees and commissions were established to overlook the quality of the education in India means timely there are different commission set by the government of India to evaluate and to access the higher education and the quality of research in our country. The first commission is Radha Krishnan Commission which is being established in 1948 and has submitted his report in 1949. It is the first major commission to be formed after independence. So this is the first commission. You have to remember the commission name and the year because it is being highly asked in UGC entrance examination. Then in Radha Krishnan Commission that is in 1948, these are the few saline features which is being there. It is also called as the University Education Commission. It is aimed at reporting on the Indian University education and suggested improvement that may be desirable to suit the present and future requirements of the country. Means this commission has outlined that what is the past and what is the future of the higher education in our country will be. Then it worked on the problem of the medium languages at the university level that what are the medium, what are the medium which is being taken in the university as a medium of communication. Then it recommended setting up of the university grant commission as a liaison between the central government and the university. This commission has said that there must be a body which is known as university grant commission which has to be working as a bridge between the central government and the university. Then you have got Murlidhar commission that is in 1952 it is being established. It came into existence under the government of India resolution in 1952. It listed several measures such as reorganizing and improving secondary education along with primary and higher education means this is a commission which has targeted all the three levels of education that is primary, higher and secondary education. Then you have got Kothari commission that has been laid in 1964. It was brought into existence under the provision of resolution of the government of India. Again government of India has developed another commission that is known as Kothari commission in 1964. Dr. D.S. Kothari, who is also a chairman of UGC at that time, was also appointed as a commission chairman and it is a pioneer for all the reforms and changes in the field of higher education in India. What you are seeing presently, this is the basic of all the commissions which you are seeing presently. It has laid the basis for establishment of a new policy on education which was later formed in 1986. So D.S. Kothari was the chairman of this commission, Kothari commission which has been established in 1964 and this commission has said that every time new education policy should be framed which for the first time is being confirmed in 1986. Now you have got Ramamurthy Review Committee 1986. It is an important committee to review the national policy on education. It had made several recommendations on revising the policy and actions required for implementing the necessary revised policy means this is the commission which has said that there must be a great revision required in higher education and in research because for the development of any country research and development is very important all the new innovations are being based on the basis of research the quality of research which a country is doing then national education policy 2020 for higher education as you all know that presently government of india has given us a new national education policy 2020 which is also known as nep 2020 the policy aims to increase the gross enrollment ratio ger in higher education to 40 50 percent by 2035 means 
the present policy is targeting to increase the ger by 50% by 2035 around 5 crore seats to be added in higher education means the seats the learning the students which are going to be intake by the university should be increased by 5 crores the policy proposes the establishment of national research foundation nrf to fund and promote research in all disciplines means this policy has said that there must be an nrf which is going to fund and promote all the researchal activities in our country then the last one the policy recommends the establishment of a single regulator for higher education called the higher education commission of india means this policy is saying that now you have got a single regulator that is known as higher education commission of india that is h e c i which is going to replace all the a uh, research and higher education system replacing the multiple regulatory bodies which is being presently presiding in our country then nep 2020 introduced heci that i have told you a single regulatory body with four verticals now understand that what are the these four verticals are as you see heci verticals these are four verticals and the functions what they are performing the first is national higher education regulatory council nherc this is the function of this is creating and implementing higher education regulation means this is a policy maker for the higher education then you have got general education council gec standard settings for academia that what are the standards on which the education will be given what will be the syllabus how it is going to be implement for the higher education then you have got higher education grant council hegc for funding academia and research activity means this is the this is the vertical on which the funding of the academic is depending upon then the last one is national accreditation council nac accreditation of academia institution means what are the qualities on which these are going to be based so for the higher education system for all the universities for all the higher education system these are the four verticals on which higher education is going to rely and heci is going to cater all these activities to the higher education ever country now let's understand the structure of institution of higher learning and research in india till date what is the structure of higher education and what are the organizations who are working on this the first one is the ugc as you all know university grants commission is a body which is going to regulate which used to hold the power of all the regulation between research so this is the most important body then second one is aicte all india council of technical education which is being established in new delhi the head quarter is in new delhi so these two are the important for the higher education learning and research in our country now university grant commission ugc ugc is the primary regulatory body in terms of higher education in india means this is the body which used to regulate all the education system in our country and for higher education this is the body which is been laid up it was established in 1953 means it was established in 1953 and under the ministry of human resource development within its head quarter in new delhi means this is been established in the year 1953 by the ministry of human resource development and its head office in new delhi it has six regional offices in cities bengaluru bhopal guwahati hyderabad kolkata and pune means presently it has got the six headquarters regional headquarters that is regional offices which is being established in bangalore bhopal guwahati hyderabad kolkata and pune the last the main agenda of ugc is to coordinate determine and maintain higher education standards means the main agenda of ugc is to coordinate all the activity between government and the university then to determine and maintain the higher education standards in our country the it undertakes a range of tasks such as providing funds to the universities establishing education standards for the universities and analyzing the growth of several education institute means direct control over university is somewhere in the hands of ugc because it is being coordinating it is being funding it is being establishing standards and several educational institutions all the universities the growth of the universities depend upon the policies which is being made by the university grant commission 
यू जी सी स्टैंडर्ड्स क्राइटीरिया मस्ट बी मेट टू इन्जॉय डिग्री अवॉर्डिंग अथॉरिटी इन इंडिया मीन्स अनलेस इन अनटिल द यूनिवर्सिटीज आर गोइंग टू अपग्रेड दियर क्वालिटीज एंड स्टैंडर्ड यू जी सी इज नॉट गोइंग टू गिव इन द परमिशन टू रन एनी कोर्सेज बिकॉज डायरेक्टली इट द यू रेगुलेटरी बॉडी यू जी सी इज रेगुलेटरी बॉडी विच यूज टू गिव द डिग्री टू द यूनिवर्सिटी टू रन दैट स्पेसिफिक कोर्स इट एडवाइज द सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट टू टेक नेसेसरी मेजर्स फॉर सेटिंग एंड इम्प्रूविंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी एजुकेशन मीन्स इट एडवाइज द गवर्नमेंट बोथ सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट that what are the steps to be taken to make higher education more feasible more reliable in the development of our country the second one is all india council of technical education aicte all the courses which is being run in technical form they are being run they are been governed by this body the technical body works towards coordination planning and development of technical education in the country means this is the body which used to take all the courses which is run towards the technology it coordinate the activity is plan the activity and make it developed for the development of the country aict was set up in the november 1945 its headquarter is in new delhi several schemes are run under aict for the betterment of the development of education in our country aict used to plan coordinate and develop all the activities which is being required in the technical education area this is a primary body which is being established in 1945 november 1945 for the development of the technical education in our country then approaches toward modern learning these are the approaches which has been very important for the modern learning the first one is experimental learning experimental learning is what experimental learning is it is the process of learning by doing it is said that it the learning was followed by doing practicals the retention level of the knowledge gained is better means here a researcher used to experiment he used to have different bases and on this basis he used to experiment he used to explore the various dimensions the various areas of the research and used to conduct practicals and on that practicals he has to conclude that what are the result he is going to get whenever experimental research is being conducted it is always going to result in certain new innovations in certain new development which is being very better for the development of any country the second one is peer learning as you know the word peer itself says that here whatever we are going to run from our society our friends our group so this is the process in which students at the same level of education and who usually belong to the same field of the education exchange their views thoughts and ideas for their better learning experiences means whenever we are talking about peer learning we are going to say that here a student a researcher of the same area are going to come together and used to share their thoughts that what are they are thinking what they are taking what are the new areas in which they can explore so here brainstorming process has been done and they are going to share their views for a new study which can be taken in that specific area so experimental study is experimental learning is what is being needed in scientific study while peer learning is somewhat which is being needed for a behavior learning then the rise of edtech means that inclusion of information and communication technology for that technical learning experience in the classroom and at the self learning level the uses of ai and ml is also recent development in the education now as i have told you that experimental learning is basically done by the researchers of science stream of science while peer learning is being done by the researchers of behavior social sciences arts commerce but with the rise of educational technology the use of artificial intelligence and machine languages is very important for the recent development in the higher education because by the help of artificial intelligence the quality of research is highly being saved now by the help of ai and the by, by the help of ml the development in education is being at par 
we are exploring the lot of data can be easily accessed the lot of data can be easily analyzed and the analysis can easily be done by the help of ai and ml so education technology the help of technology that is ict is helping the present research in a very good and a very reforming manner so these are the three approaches which is being taken in the higher education in the present scenario so modern learning is all dependent upon the artificial learning and the machine learning because if a person is highly competent to learn about artificial learning and machine learning the whole process of this learning is going to be very easy so government from time to time has set up different commissions for the quality and for the assessment of the quality of higher education so this is all you are going to see that for a higher education these commissions has given the different outcomes which is being presently taken into account and new education policy that is national education policy 2020 has reformed our country in a very transformed manner so for higher education and research these are the criteria in which we are going to explore i hope you have understood these points thank you